in Japan completely. And um, that didn't happen. It was all the damage. All the damage was occurred mm -hmm. from the tsunami. It, it's a fascinating uh, case. Uh, Scott, your thoughts on this? Okay, well, you have different types of uh, earthquake events. You, if it's a thrust fault like you had in Northridge, you know, it, it, it'll lift up a whole area, you know, in a split second. And, yeah, man, you get massive devastation. And that one only lasted for seven seconds. You know, it, it, this one was where the the plate itself was actually widening. It was pulling apart. So you you had more of an indention type of event. Uh, you had a, a probably a nine off the coast of Oregon, uh, r roughly 300 years ago, and that water from the tsunami came in 20 miles and halfway up a mountainside. They they called it Thunderbird, where you know the the Indians called it Thunderbird, and, and because a whale was deposited halfway up a mountainside. So depending on how that fault reacts or acts it depends on what type of an event you're going to have. You know, you'll have the P wave and the S wave, but if it's a thrust fault or if it's a, a you know, it just depends on what kind of a fault it is. Now, if Japan got hit with a thrust fault, if that would have been a nine thrust fault, then the wave, the tsunami would have just covered the entire Japan. It would, it would just covered it completely. But this one is actually sinking Japan. Uh, Japan uh, sank another three feet since the earthquake, and it's still sliding into the ocean, it, which makes all those nuclear facilities there are high risk. And, and you got all these power lines that are running in the ocean. It, it already caused a, a, a problem with a, a Korean reactor because it was getting, you know, uh, it's energy yeah. from from that those lines. Interesting. It, it, you know, so you're, it, and and they're going to have another one. It, oh it's yeah. Again, it, it's going to be on the Filipino fault. You, you've been it, predicting these left and right. I mean, you want to talk about predictions? Scott is a powerhouse because he understands this stuff. James, does that answer your question? Yeah, uh, I just wanted to throw that at you guys. Very, very interesting stuff. And, uh, Bob, you have incredible shows this week. Really appreciate it. Thank you, James. I appreciate it, and, and thanks for calling. Let's move on to some other calls. Uh, we still have lines open at 866-841-1065. And, uh, yeah, I I try to get the, the best guess possible because I sure as heck don't know what I'm talking about. You know, Scott, that's why I got guys like you, a powerhouse of information, information shock resistance. Shock resistance. That's right. You betcha. Because if you, if you don't have your head and your wits together, man, during these events, because they're coming, and, and they're not going to stop until they're so totally adjusted. You know, God returns back here. We don't fly away. You know, I, I watch all these 501c3 charities you know, so-called charities, man, that's an idol, you know, and, and there's supposed to be a, a separation between uh, church and state. Now, if if they're they're trying to save the badger or something, okay, I, I, I can see it, you know, them doing a non-profit or whatever, but a church is a church is a church. That's it. You know, they're, they're, there should be separation, and they backdoored them, and they went for it because most of them are money changers anyway. You know, or just, you know, they just weren't aware that they're in the third generation of idolatry. You know, either way, it destroys the planet. You know, the, this piece of paper has no conscience. You know, that's why that guy from Tonko went and hid behind it. You know, you, you look at this camping dude, and, and I mean, he goes, oh, the, you know, he comes out to, what, a couple of days later and says, oh, well, you know, it, it was a spiritual thing. Dude, you predicted a worldwide earthquake. It didn't happen, okay. So that that tells me that's a joke, you know. It, it you know I hope he repents, comes out of it, you know. But a lot of people got hurt, it, you know. They they sold their stuff, they they went on the road, you know. They bought all these billboards, you know. And, and, and I mean, come on, this is beyond ridiculous. You know, I just yeah. sit there going, wow. Yeah. It's Scott's crazy. It's not a promotion. Yeah, exactly, exactly. All right, Scott, 
Uh, let's pick that up in just a moment for our final segment with Scott from the Believers Underground. Always great to have Scott on every Friday for the second hour of the program. A lot of great shows coming up next week still to come. Dennis McKenna on Memorial Day. Have a safe weekend, folks, and enjoy time with the earth and your loved ones, friends, and family. And keep it conscious. Get out there in the garden, do something nice for somebody. And uh, by all means, stay in touch with us. Send us uh, your emails, your messages at Bob Tuscan. Just find the contact. Always love to hear from listeners, good or bad or indifferent. I like to hear from you. So please message me. I read all of the emails. Might not get back to everyone. But I do read everyone's email, and, and thank you for taking the time and contacting us with your questions, comments, or concerns. All right, folks, final phone calls, and Scott from the Weavers Underground coming up in just a moment. It's the Bob Tuscan Radio Show. BobTuscan.com Final segment tonight with Scott from the Believers Underground. We're taking your calls at 866-841-1065. Charles from California is on the line. Had a few questions for Scott. We'll take his call. Charles, welcome to the show. Thanks for calling. Thank you for having me. It's a great, great show as always. I really appreciate your efforts you put into this show. You have a good attitude and a great show interesting all the time thank you very much uh could i ask scott a quest couple questions you can here? ask scott what he had for dinner just don't ask him <laughs> about his ex-wife <laughs> you can ask hey, me about scott, that I... too man i'm all over the book i don't care yeah go ahead man What's okay up, Charles? all right first question is we have non-stop winds here in California, like 45 mile per in winds every day. I'm getting tired of it. And I'm wondering if is this part of what you're talking about or is it just a natural for the season? Because I don't really remember it being this bad all the time, just windy all the time, breezy, windy. And my second question is, with all these things happening like the tornadoes and the flooding in the areas where our food comes from, I tend to feel that this might be done by the government with their heart machine or some other, you know, things they have that we don't even know about. Do you think that is true, or do you think this is just natural phenomenon from the the earth? Those are my two questions. Okay. Uh, the first one, definitely yes, but when you got the ocean current stalling, we had a tornado here in Northern California just yesterday. A tornado. Okay, so, you know, we're, we're, we got problems. The earth, the earth is, she's Wait a second. doing her thing. A tornado in Northern California? That's something I don't think I've ever heard of. Yep, the, I mean it came across the news, man. It, it, someone even put it, AP put it on, uh, or was it AP that put it on? But yeah, a tornado touched down in Northern California, and and you, you, we've already had the scientists that you know release that we we can look at you know ten feet of water feet during a, a winter uh, session. You know they're already building a second LA River down there in LA. I saw it with my own eyes when I was down there. You know, they're they're preparing, they're doing all kinds of protocols behind the scenes. As far as the the food crops, man, they're trying to protect those things like crazy. I mean, wow! I mean, they are just getting wiped out globally. Yeah, you know, I mean, Australia, their food crop got wiped out with the, sure. all their flooding. And then they they had drought on the other side, and then you have yeah. these lightning storms that that burn up the rest. It, it, yep. Russia's got major lightning storms going right now, and and it's just burning up stuff like crazy. You know, and, had, in regards to the food, Scott, on on top of that, we see the pollinators dying off the the bees. And of course, the bees are very much connected to the the food that we eat and the the growth of that food uh, certain foods need pollinators almonds and others uh, and it's just one thing after the other it's it's a food world order more than a new world order in many respects 
Well, this anomaly is going to take out crops globally, and it's only going to get worse. See, you're going to have rain going into areas that it didn't rain as much before, it, it, depending on how the ocean current stalls. Uh, eventually, it's just going to punch its way through because it, it, the water's got to circulate. You know, that's why I put the area between Panama Canal and Guatemala at the highest risk, mm -hmm. okay, especially with all the holes they drilled over there in the Gulf. I mean, right. Talk and, and to answer Gulf. his other question, um, HARP, you know, what, what is the HARP connection? We, we've brought this up on past shows. Uh, earthquakes, excuse me, not earthquakes, uh, tornadoes in Northern California, uh, that's not common. Is this HARP provoked or is this merely na natural? And, Charles, thank you very much for your call. Oh, okay. I I don't get into the harp stuff. You know, I, I talked about it briefly a couple times, but there's a lot of people that you know are are into the harp stuff. Or, you know, I'm I'm into what's happening with the earth. Now, if if they're trying to manipulate the weather away from an area to to save their butts, you know that that could be happening. Yeah, but Scott, you you have to look at. HARP, and if not HARP, uh, other scalar technologies and weather manipulation, chemtrails, all these different things. And, and we've talked about all these things, and I, I know you do look at them. So, you, so the point I'm trying to make is you do have to – you can't negate these things. I mean, if, if you're really looking at the Earth and the natural Earth processes, you have to understand how they're reacting to these uh, pro provocation. What's the word? I'm, uh, I'm more concerned with CERN. Okay, you know, CERN, they, okay. they did their... I'm more their concerned with CERN. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, they did their big bang. You know, they, they got these, uh, you know, major technologies, which they probably got from spooks, you know, just like Saul in the Old Testament, you know. You know, they, they invoked these spooks, man. These things are real, you know, and they could hand over some serious technology, and they think that they're that are getting something good, and, and these are lying spirits, man. Uh, and and they always leap before they look, you know. So just look at the nuclear industry, man. I mean, heck, they just leap before they look, and then they just build them wherever. But uh, they're, they're bending light, okay. And when you're getting into that type of technology, it's, uh, you know, I've seen a couple times, it's, it's kind of like a split screen. And when those things take place, you know, they can knock down a World Trade Center or they can cause an earthquake. Uh, I, I think their gizmo is going to get away from them since they found the Hegg's bosom or the God particle on steroids because they had no idea how powerful that thing was. It, it, it basically, uh, Alexander Hegg's came out in 1964 and said, hey, man, there's a vapor that goes through the universe. And that, that vapor keeps everything in place. Well, if they remove the vapor, okay, then it doesn't stay in place. Now, you can have a third of the stars in the heavens fall. You remove that vapor, they're, they're not controlled by anything. They, they could just, I, I mean, this is a super weapon I, uh, or, or a disruptor of, of biblical proportions. Uh, I mean, in Alice, the Project Alice, it's a time projection tunnel. Wow. You know, I mean, they, they, and this stuff, you know, if they think of it, they'll build it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you've definitely caught my attention uh, on this. Uh, fascinating stuff. Um, we'll have to do a, a deeper show on this. Scott, thanks as always for coming on the show, brother. We'll see you next week. All right, and, and I'm on uh, the Intel Hub now for two hours on Tuesday night. So Very hopefully cool. That uh, that's that's good, and it's locked in. All right, we'll, we'll link we'll link that up. Thanks, Scott. Love you, buddy. Love you too. Love everybody. Have a great weekend. All right, folks. That's right. Have a great weekend. Stay safe, and uh, tune in next week to more of the Bob Tusman Show. Yeah.